guess what? Our woman crush is here with us on Hello Nigeria. Today we have the one and only NY Nana. And of course on WCW Days we have to bring someone in. And today in particular, we're going to be looking at the way she goes around her job in the media as a woman, her struggles, her successes, breaking the glass ceiling and more. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you for you being so here. Thank you so much for having me. I think this is actually fantastic <laughs> for me because the last time we were in an interview setting, it was Ooh. you interviewing me. Now it's really weird <laughs> yes. because I, I'm on the other side. So now it's you. So how do you feel being the one answering all I the questions? I just want to cry. Oh. Because I asked you a lot of questions. No, don't when worry. I'll be very nice show. to you. I'll be very nice to you. Good definitely. to have you. Thank you Good so much. To have you. We should have you on the show as well. Oh, definitely. I'm always down. And you came on the show for us today, so you know, can return the favor. Yeah. Now, what would you say? I'm going to ask you. It's not really a hard question, but what would you say is the most difficult thing about being a woman in the media today? Um, if you could choose I one thing. I would say proving that you can be better. Because as a woman, there's always that, oh, what can she really do? How is she going to do it? They still have that mentality that if you're not a guy, you might not be able to you know, do a lot of things. Um, I've, I've worked in a place where it took me a while to get to the next level just because, you know, okay, she's, she's a girl, she's young, she might just get married, get pregnant, and, you know, drop off the media world, so why teach her all these things? So it's just a lot, just proving that you can, you know, do better. Funny That's, enough, some people argue that the media is actually more favorable towards women than it is for men. No way. <laughs> really? Okay, no that's way. another argument for another day. Now, you said some of the argue, some of the challenges would be the fact that people think that you're a woman, you're married, and you could just decide, you know, when you get pregnant. Not that was even you. before I got and married. And now you're married. Yeah. So, has there really been any change? There hasn't been any changes. Uh, truth be told, when I was about to get married, a friend of mine was saying that, um, are you sure you really want to get married? Because when you get married now, people might not want to work with you. Can you, you know, imagine? Yeah, and then you know, when you get pregnant, then you go for matern maternity leave, then you know, you're done. And I'm and like, okay, still so we'll stay here. <laughs> you know what, though? Me and, Olive, here. me and Olive were having this discussion the other day, and we were saying how we've been at like, points in our lives where we might have been interested in a guy or something, or he's interested in us, and the second he knows we're in the media, it's all like, mm-hmm. It's either you're choosing that your media job or you're choosing me. And it's like, why do I have to make that choice? Because this is my passion and this is my career path. And I would say that that is so hard for women today in the media. I mean, she said that on Movie Talk. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so actually, I, really I shared that, that on your show. Yes, because the truth is, unfortunately, mm. when I'm telling my story, it will definitely be part of my story. I've had to make sacrifices, you know. I've had to sacrifice a boyfriend who didn't want me to be on TV uh, or who didn't I want me to be in the media. Have... So I'm asking, did you ever have to go through such as well? Yeah, when I was when I was doing radio, so I had this boyfriend because I was really young. I was like 18. Everyone was older than me. I even had, you know, people who would look at me and be like, oh, she's, she's so young and, you know. That's another story. But then I had this boyfriend who would constantly be on my... Like, he would say, why did you not pick my cousin? Okay, I was in the studio. This is your radio thing. To, to not work for me, what do you guys really do? There's not just talk. So why do you even have to give it your all? There's, and it got to a time where I just had to say, you know what, this is what I want to do. So and now so I would it's say... ever this radio or you, and I had to choose. So and at the end of the day, what radio. boils down to this? Let's talk about this now as ladies. Would, would we say it's a thing of insecurity on the part of a man or on the, on the part of a guy who says you shouldn't pursue your career in media? Now, the truth is sometimes there have been some negative connotations surrounding women in media. They mm. tend to think, oh, you meet a lot of men, so you have the opportunity. Yes. It's a terrible and it, an absolutely wrong notion. And for radio, because I was in the music world, so they say you meet a lot of musicians and then you end up, you know, being very wayward. Can you imagine? Yeah. And another thing They're all well, asking you out. Can you imagine? <laughs> you know what? You know what they also pick up on as well? Because of the sexualization of women in the media today, and that's a global problem that mm. a lot of us have actually tried to curtail, the second you're a woman in the media, you're automatically linked to the person that you are liking or the person who likes you thinking that she's just going to be sexualized or she's going to sexualize herself. And it's like, even if I wanted to... <laughs> and it's very Ooh, painful. Me, it's very painful because yeah. where I used to work before, I had this colleague who did something that till tomorrow when I see him, I'm just like. So then iPhone 5 came out and me, I like I liked the phone, so I bought the phone. And this phone then could like my salary could buy it. And then he goes and it got missing, so I bought another one. So he goes <clears throat> 
a man bought it for you. <clears throat> but of course. And I'm like, but you what can't is the same place? You, so you know my salary and I know your salary. So when you buy something, I know how you got it. Why does it have so, to yeah, be? Yeah, so why why does it always have to be like I really felt bad that day and I I shaped the whole office because I'm dealt, I'm worried. When I'm angry, everyone has to know that that I'm angry. So I shaped the whole office and then he came apologizing and I'm like I'm like Thank God he actually apologized. <laughs> so now <laughs> speaking about dating colleagues, you married a, a man in your industry. Yeah. Did you ever think, first of all, that you would want to marry someone in the industry and how has it been for you so far? First, I did. I didn't even think I was going to get married because I'm very stubborn. You didn't like, want to get married. <laughs> like, That's what I tell myself like, every day. I did not think that anyone would want to even get married to me because I'm very stubborn. Like, if I had to at that age, I would have gone with my boyfriend. But I'm like, I went to radio. Like, it happens all the time when I see that something is not going how I want it. I'm very selfish in that area. If it's not going how I want it or because of all the struggles and challenges, you even have, being a woman in this industry, you have to be really, really tough. So if it's not going my way, I just... So when this happened, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but did you ever have thoughts before where you were kind of like, I can never be with a guy in the industry or I think I can only be with a guy in the industry? I think you even end up always been in a, uh, with a guy in the industry because they're the only ones that understand that you have yeah, to I don't, be, I've not you have been to be out like <laughs> to like 12 one doing red carpets they do a lawyer boyfriend cannot understand it Funny, the Bible always dated lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're always going to say, boy. you know, they're always not going to understand that it's work. They're not going to understand where they draw the line. So I, I, I think I've always seen that line, okay, maybe I'll just go with someone who can understand what I do and not, you know, when we get married, and I say, oh, you have to sit down at home. Leila, this is food for thought, so maybe this is why we are still single. single. That's probably we why need to we're still single. We need to re-strategize. Men in the media. <laughs> but I think this is, this is very interesting. Let's talk mm. about um, your journey. So personally, you're, you're a TV presenter, and you talk to celebrities and movie critics. You're a movie critic. Yeah, so that's how has side. that been for you? All right, so I'm a TV presenter. Um, I have a show called Movie Talk. It's on African Movie Channel. Mm -hmm. So we do an uh, interview. You've been on the show. I don't know if you can be on the show because you've not done any movie yet. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about, you know, interviewing movie producers, directors, actors, like anyone really who has anything to, you know, do in the movie world. And have you been in the movie um, world as well? <sighs> I tried once. I wanted to be an actor for a long time. You're like, that's not for me. Yeah, it's for me, but still talking about the challenges. So I, I think I'm one of those uh, few people who fell in the wrong side. You know, when you're trying to go into the movie world and then you meet some directors who are going to say, oh, come and see me and I'm going to put you in all, your, all my movies and all that kind of, you know what I'm talking about. So, so you basically just, you just tell, sexual harassment. Yeah, so you just industry. tell yourself, mm. so when it gets better, we might come back. But for now... <laughs> <laughs> Will it really get better if you don't try to fight for what you want? I think it's getting better because we're having, and the fact that we're not having women in film, we're having a lot of them right now. So it's not like before where men, they have almost all the power. Right now we have directors, we have like the blessing, Egbe's that will cast you because of, you know, your ability. Udwak is there. We have Omonio, but we have a lot of women in film now. So it's not if if you go to a male director or and they and they do that, of course you know you turn you say sister, help me. I want to be an actor. You know I don't think it's reducing, but we're getting to that point where people can actually speak up and even point fingers if they have to. I think there's something in the media that women need to tap into, though that women are missing out on. Me included. I remember when I went for my first job. Uh, to become a TV presenter and it was said to me that at the time I was bigger than I am now that's a story for another day but they said to me they were like but you know you're a bit on the plumpy side you're gonna have to lose weight you know to actually really and truly make it right now we always get told certain things and certain a lot of pressure is put on women in particular and we don't see that same pressure being put on men in the industry what would you say has pressurized you the most and something that's really knocked you that you've had to say you know what I can't get knocked down by this uh, I don't think I've gotten to that stage, especially for TV. Nah, I haven't. It was my early days when I felt like maybe I was too young. A lot of 
old people around me and some of them were finding it really difficult you know to flow with me like oh she's too small and and that that was a very long time ago right now i think we're just you know. right now you're a big fish rolling with all the superstars <laughs> interviewing all the big celebrities on the tv screens mm. let's talk about the Met gala for a bit mm. before we let you go leila and i started a show speaking about it and it's gotten a lot of criticism actually ocean 8 movie premiere has gotten a lot of criticism online the fact that nigerians went all out and used the theme the met gala they said we do the most. Nigerian celebrities want to go and kill themselves because it's a foreign movie. What's your mm. take on that? Do we do the most or is it okay? The... <laughs> I saw those pictures. <laughs> well, you know, there was a price to it. Yes. Yeah, so but beyond the, the price, that was just price. for this one. When we have a James Bond movie, for example, the last James Bond movie, I'm, I'm, I can't remember the name right now, but we know we had an elaborate premiere. We have mm. elaborate premieres for Black Panther, you know, for a couple of these movies that are foreign movies. We don't have that much for our Nigerian movies. And some people are arguing that we need to put as much dedication to promoting our Nigerian movies as we do to promoting mm. international movies where not even one Nigerian actor is featured. But I feel like we, we, we are better than we used to be. Like right now, before, you won't really have actors, you know, come on movie talk just to talk about, um, they want to come talk about themselves. But right now we have them coming on the show to come and promote their movies. They're doing tours, radio tours. They're doing really big red carpets, even if it's not as big as this one. So, and it's surprising because you go on the red carpet and you see a big movie star just coming in with maybe like trousers and you're like, oh, I'm just here to support. But that one, they come all, uh, and that kind of dressing, that kind of dress takes weeks, or, you know, before you get ready. And all of you were there. And yes, I was there to watch the film. I was invited. I did not go to compete. But so I wore, are you on this table? I wore a really pretty dress you by Sosa, so Sosa, but I wasn't out to compete. I wore a simple dress, a simple monostrap dress, one sleeve. In fact, you can go on my Instagram at Olive Emody to see what the dress it was. You know what? Gold. I even need to praise Olive for a really. second. I actually need to praise Olive because I was going through those pictures that night and I was just going, okay, okay, okay. Then I now saw Olive's and I was like, thank God for my sister. As in, she's <laughs> calm, she's so classy, yes, so I, elegant. I didn't even try to Honestly, Shop at Sosa really killed that dress. Thank you. you. Shop at Sosa, shout out to you. So let's get to, for, for those of us, it's been a fantastic conversation with you. I'm sure people want to find out what you're up to, you know, your, your work as a TV presenter, how can yeah. they follow you? And your vlog, because I know you vlog on YouTube uh, as well. All right, so before I talk about my vlog, let me just talk about movie talk. So, um... Like I said before, it's a show where we talk everything movie related. And so I'm even going to create, you know, a segment where we talk uh, to upcoming uh, movie stars. So that one you can be on. <laughs> Even sure before, you do, before you do your movie, you can come on the show. Why not? So, yeah, so if you have, you know, a Star Times decoder or crazy, it is 72 on Star Times and 145 on crazy really nice so you can watch the show movie talk season two is coming out you have been in the season one yeah so i think I, I should invite you to season two okay we do the set is amazing again. and the show is bigger and better it's starting on the second of july all right so it comes amazing okay so how can you follow you on social media <laughs> all right so you can follow me at ny underscore oba all right. Mm. So at NY underscore over for more information about what she's up to, about movie talk, her vlog and everything else. Thank you so much for coming on the Thank show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank <laughs> you so much. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.